Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC and this is Blue Lions TV and today I'm bringing you guys the Predict That 11 video for our upcoming game against Bournemouth tomorrow at 7.45pm. Just a few things to announce before I start the video please, if you haven't pressed the bell notification button, please press that and stay notified to all things Blue Lions TV. And the second thing is, I want to get 500 likes for this video so please smash that like button. When it comes to the injury and fitness updates, Courtois and Fabregas will be making a return to the first team, Murata is still going to be out and so is William. I'm guessing Mitchley is training with the squad because he might be possibly available for the game against Bournemouth tomorrow but most likely he will be making a move to Dortmund as it stands currently. David Luiz is another player that won't be playing any part tomorrow because he has an injury at this moment in time. Now getting straight into the predicted 11 part of the video. Starting with the goalkeeper, Courtois will be making his return to the team. I think that Caballero has been decent. Even with Caballero there have been moments where he's been a little bit shaky but I think it's understandable when you haven't really played consistently and let's say for example you haven't played for like a month apart. Of course it's natural that you'll be a little bit rusty as you play but with Caballero as games have gone on he has got more suited and adjusted and I think that he's been pretty decent. For the back three I'm expecting to see Aspilicueta, Christensen and Gary Cahill forming that. For the wing back position I'm expecting to see Alonso and Victor Moses make a return as well. Now I'm expecting us to use a 3-4-3 for the game against Bournemouth tomorrow so I think Conte is going to go with Bakayoko and N'Golo Kante and I think the reason why he's going to use these two in midfield is due to what the front three is going to look like tomorrow. N'Golo and Bakayoko will provide some type of defensive stability. If I'm being honest, I'm not really seeing the partnership there just yet with Bakayoko and N'Golo Kante. I feel like N'Golo Kante is doing a bit more extra work than he normally was doing last season when he had Matic beside him. I think that's just a natural growing pain and I'm expecting probably next season for them to really gel together. Now for the front three, I'm expecting Ross Barkley to make his full debut. I'm expecting to see Eden Hazard playing false nine and I think Pedro's going to make a return to the team as well. Against Newcastle, Barkley was decent. He didn't really do anything spectacular he just really went with emotions and uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he really provides to the team. He's got a lot of confidence in his ability so let's hope that he can express himself and really show what he's about because I'll sound cynical I've always thought that Ross Barkley is a guy where he's made a career having a good one or two month spell during a season he's never been consistent throughout a season and I think to make that step up to Chelsea where he hasn't really shown that consistency over a full year is definitely a big call but if Barkley has faith in his own abilities and of course playing with better players around him that should give him the opportunity to really show what he's about. We've had Joy using a false nine system against Bournemouth. I think with how they play and defend as a team you definitely get a lot of space between the lines between their midfield and their defence and I think if the front three play very close to each other that's going to cause them a lot of problems. I think as the game goes on I'm expecting Conte to sub off one of the front three players maybe Ross Barkley to bring on Cesc Fabregas where will revert to a 3-5-2 system where Fabregas will have the license on the left hand side to really push up to support the front three and fall deep to help support the midfield. Could hudson Adoy play a part in the match? I'd like to see that but I'm guessing that's not very likely. Will Emerson be registered in time to even make the match day squads? I think he will but I feel it's very optimistic to expect him to be part of the match day squad and to be on the bench for the game tomorrow. I don't think it's going to take us that long to see Emerson play a part in a match or make the bench because he has recovered from injury and he has played minutes for Roma already. Compared to Ross Barkley that hadn't touched a football at all in the Premier League that was the reason why it took him so long to really make it into the Chelsea match day squads. Now the lineup I've gone for in this game is exactly the same as the lineup I expect Conte to use for the game tomorrow. All I'm really hoping to see is that Hudson Odoi gets another small cameo against Bournemouth. In that short spell he played in, he really showed his qualities and I'd like to see him get another platform to really show more of what he can do. Now I'm going to start the match preview segment for the video. Bournemouth are going to have Stanislas and Joshua King available for this game and to be honest Bournemouth have done very well against us so far this season. We've only beaten them by the goal, we beat them around October 1-0 and then we beat them 2-1 in the Carabao Cup quarter final second leg. But why have Bournemouth done so well against us? Well what Bournemouth have done is they have matched our system. Now in the first leg, or well not the first leg, well the first encounter against them, they did field a 3-4-3 system and in the Carabao Cup they did field a 3-5-2 but 
that was down to not having enough attacking players available because so many were out injured at the time. And really, that really complements the style that Eddie Howe has created and built at Bournemouth. I do kind of see Eddie Howe as like a B-Tech Arsene Wenger. And I say that and I make that similarity because Eddie Howe is someone that is very loyal to his players. And that's one facet about Arsene Wenger that a lot of people overlook time and time again. For example, how many times have Arsenal kept hold of players that are injured? With most clubs, it's very harsh in modern day reality of football. Players will get sold the next season or clubs will look to keep the movement. For example, Newcastle. For example, Newcastle. When Gutierrez came back from testicular cancer and he scored the last winning goal of the season to keep them up in the Premier League. And with Ryan Teller who broke down with another injury again. After that season ended, they didn't renew their contracts and they let both leave. Very ruthless. Vango is someone that is very loyal to his squad and Eddie Howe is someone very similar and I think that comes at the detriment sometimes because there are a few certain players that shouldn't be playing first team anymore for Bournemouth. They've been in the league for how many years now? For example, someone like a Francis still shouldn't be a first choice defender for a club like Bournemouth and really that's what costs Bournemouth. I enjoy their philosophy on football because they like to play differently, they play to their strengths and their abilities, they like to play with the ball so they always get respect for that. But until Eddie Howe can be a bit more ruthless, replace some of the first team players with better quality, they're always going to be that club that do very well but they can never reach the final hurdle. As I was making the point earlier, they've had great success matching our system and many teams do. And it does suit Bournemouth because naturally they do like to attack under Eddie Howe so that means that they do flood men forwards. And that was testament in the second leg in the Carabao Cup. That second half in particular, we were completely battered. It was one of the worst viewing experiences I've seen at Stamford Bridge. From my perspective, I really didn't enjoy it and I couldn't accept that Bournemouth were outplaying us like this. And how were they able to do that? Well, it's quite similar to how every team is able to do it when they do press high. Yes, one, they use that man marking pressing system. Two, they make sure they stop our wing backs getting forward because our wing backs really don't get enough strength. Why he doesn't give more support to the wing backs so they're not easily susceptible at being pressed in their own half and closed down? When it comes to wing backs, I think we're the only team that don't really utilize our wing backs to the maximum efficiency. Yeah, some people might think it's going to come down to their individual player quality, but. And as I keep saying, it's our attacking build up and how we like to break teams down. Bournemouth are good at keeping the ball in the opposition half. And with Nathan Aki in their defence, who's been their best player so far this season, they're able to plat from the back a bit more efficiently. And in the past five games, Bournemouth are unbeaten. They've drawn three, won two. So they're going to feel very confident about facing us tomorrow. But at the same time with me making these comments, we actually have a lot of players that enjoy playing against Bournemouth. For example, Eden Hazard, the main man, in four games against Bournemouth, he scored five goals. And another guy, Ross Barkley. In the past five games, he scored twice and he's created three assists. And before William got injured, he was another player that liked playing against Bournemouth because he scores a lot of goals against them. Now with this game tomorrow, the most telling thing is going to be who's going to be playing up front to make part of that front three. It looks like Mitch, he won't be playing. If things work to plan, it looks like he'll be off to Dortmund. So I'm expecting to see the return of false signing and Hazard. And to be honest, he's had a lot of success against Bournemouth playing this way. Now, we have the advantage where if we keep that front three tight, it's going to make it very hard for Bournemouth defenders to really pick up anyone. Hazard's so good, he just needs to make a simple back heel to create space for himself and play people in. Another thing too is that in the past 10 encounters against Bournemouth, we beat them. We've only lost once. So we definitely are a bogey team to Bournemouth. I'm expecting this counter to be quite tactical. It's going to be a standard Chelsea display where moments in the game we will press high and in other moments we will look to create those low blocks and try to hit them on a the counter attack. But to be honest, we've had a lot of joy against Bournemouth when it comes to playing direct and playing on the counter. The Carabao Cup was testament to that. And it's going to be quite similar to Newcastle in that sense where Bournemouth's defenders individually, other than Nathan Aki, they aren't of a very high level. So. Normally, it's individual mistakes that really ruin Bournemouth and that's what really affects them in games. I'm expecting us to get the win tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to be an easy win. I'm going to be going for another tight scoreline. I'm going to be going for 2-0. The front three will be key in beating Bournemouth tomorrow, especially with Hazard playing a more central role. That's going to make it very difficult for the Bournemouth defenders. And if you guys remember too, the last time we did play a false nine system against Bournemouth with Hazard playing up front, we won 3-0. 
so I'm expecting us to create a lot of direct counter-attacking opportunities. But anyway you guys, thank you for watching today's Predictor 11 preview. Please like, comment and subscribe. Press the bell notification button if you haven't pressed it already. And stay notified to all things Blue Lines TV. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lines TV. Signing out.